Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 45, Eating Disorders. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and beautiful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. So this one is kind of a follow-up to last week. Uh, last week, we did a podcast on body image. Yep. And during the research uh, for that podcast... One of the things that came up almost as a recurring theme was eating disorders that contribute to body image issues. Yep. So there was too much to really uh, kind of add to last week because we were kind of uh, concentrating on body image. So I figured we might as well do a follow-up with eating disorders, and we'll talk about some of the stuff here. Now, just a kind of a note in the beginning here, I am not an expert on eating disorders. Uh, the information that I have here comes from multiple reliable sources on the internet. Um, I thought it was an important enough topic that we should at least talk about it. Uh, but if you do suspect that you or someone you love or know, uh, does suffer from an eating disorder, then I would highly recommend that you seek professional help for yourself or for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what eating disorders are. We will take a look at the different types of eating disorders, uh, along with what their symptoms are and, and some signs. Um, and we'll talk about um, basically how to spot those and try to get people help with them. And then any closing remarks or shout outs that you might have. All righty. Are we set to go? I think so. Before we start, let me ask you, do you think you suffer from any eating disorders? Um, not particularly, but I do have my thoughts on my problems with eating. Okay. Well, maybe we'll get a chance to talk about those as well. Yep. So, let's get right into it. Alrighty. So, what are eating disorders? Well, according to psychiatry.org... Eating disorders are illnesses in which the people experience severe disturbances in their eating behaviors and related thoughts and emotions. People with eating disorders typically become preoccupied with food and their body weight. In many cases, eating disorders occur with other psychiatric disorders like anxiety, panic, obsessive compulsive disorder, and alcohol and drug abuse problems. New evidence suggests that hereditary may play a part in why certain people develop eating disorders, but these disorders also afflict many people who have no prior family history. Without treatment of both the emotional and physical symptoms of these disorders, malnutrition, heart problems, and other potentially fatal conditions can result. However, with proper medical care, those with eating disorders can resume suitable eating habits and return to better emotional and physiological health. So with that clinical definition of what eating disorders are, do you think you have an eating disorder? Well, not now. I know that. I definitely know I don't suffer from an eating disorder. Um, I will. I, I normally eat what I'm given unless I don't like it. Um, and I don't try to go out of my way to eat healthier than I normally do. Okay. So nothing obsessive, basically. Nothing obsessive. Uh, Obsessive. Okay. So, and I don't think you have an eating disorder either. I think you're a teenager. I think you eat, um, when your body allows it. 
Uh, your body is changing constantly at your age. Uh, so your appetite fluctuates. Sometimes you eat a lot and that's because your body's going through a growth spurt or something else. Uh, sometimes you don't feel very well and you don't eat a lot at all. Um, but I think in the long run, ultimately it balances itself out. Uh, you don't seem to have any obsessions about it. Um, but again, I'm not an expert, Yeah. Um, but we'll talk about what some of the symptoms are. So let's come back and we'll talk about some of the types of eating disorders that are out there. So one of the most common eating disorders is commonly referred to as anorexia or anorexia nervosa. Have you ever heard of that before? No, not really. I've never actually been specified with eating disorders, only that there are eating disorders out there and that there are different types. Now, have have they discussed eating disorders at all in school or anything like that? No, the only thing is that they always say to make sure you eat healthy be, so to, to have a long life, and that's pretty much all they really told us. They never warned us about eating disorders in school. All right, so. well, and I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah. So... Anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder characterized by weight loss or a lack of appropriate weight gain in growing children. Difficulties maintaining an appropriate body weight for height and age and stature, and in many individuals, distorted body image. And this goes back to what we talked about last week. So people with anorexia generally restrict the number of calories and the types of food they eat. Some people with the disorder also exercise compulsively, purge via vomiting. Ew, I know. it's, mm -hmm. But that's how some people deal with it. Or laxatives. Uh, or they binge eat. Um, do you know anyone who exhibits any of these symptoms? And, and if you do, don't name any names. We don't want to single anyone out. Well, I mean, there is this one YouTuber I watch, and they make videos talking about this. And they definitely used to suffer from these symptoms when they were a teenager. Okay. So here's some of the warning signs or some of the symptoms. Um, and these are emotional and physical. So there's dramatic weight loss. Anytime you see someone who drops weight very quickly, um, most dietitians will, and doctors even will tell you two to three pounds a week is what a healthy weight loss is. Anything beyond that you tend to be starving your body to a certain extent and doing damage. Yeah. Uh, they dress in layers to hide the weight loss uh, or to stay warm because as you shed those pounds, uh, you have less insulation and you tend to get cold faster. Yeah. Uh, they are preoccupied with weight, food, calories, uh, fat grams, and dieting. Um, conscious effort to not put weight on. Uh, they'll refuse to eat certain few foods, uh, progressing to restrictions against whole categories, such as I'm not going to eat any carbohydrates. Uh, and some of these symptoms, uh, you know, going down this list here, it's funny because some of these symptoms kind of fall into the category of some of these fad diets that are out there. Like, uh, for instance, the first one that comes to mind is, is Atkins, where with Atkins, it's a very low carb uh, diet. And it kind of has people looking, obsessing about their weight and stuff like that. Um, so there's a lot of similarities between that sort of diet leading you to an uh, anorexic lifestyle. Uh, one of the other ones they talk about is you make frequent comments about feeling fat or overweight despite weight loss. Uh, and this goes back to what we talked about last week with body image where – no matter how much weight you lose, you feel as though you're still overweight. Mm -hmm. um, do you do you see a lot of kids in school these days that are kind of obsessing about their, their weight at this point in time? No, I've never really noticed because, one, I really don't socialize with them, and two, no one seems to be complaining. Everyone else is just worrying about their own business, about how the fact that I really don't like school or any other topics. I see. And do any of your friends really show any growing or overwhelming concern about weight gain or anything like that? 
No, not really. My friends really haven't brought up that topic. You see, d eating disorders is something I don't normally hear too often. Like, I know eating disorders is a thing and that it's definitely not a good habit. Um, but I've never really experienced anyone, like, I've never met anyone in person okay. with any eating disorders. Well, and that's, I guess that's kind of why I wanted to go through some of these symptoms because you may have met people who exhibit these symptoms, but you don't realize that they have an eating disorder. And that's kind of, kind of what the danger of eating disorders tend to be is that people have them and they, they hide them sometimes, um, or they have them and they don't realize that they have them. So being aware of what these symptoms are helps you to spot these people who might need help, but not realize that they need help. Yeah. So a couple of the other things that we run into, and there's a lot of symptoms with this, and I don't, I don't want to go through all of them because it's a very, very long list. Uh, but some of the things to look for are um, they deny feeling hungry. You know, you may go out to lunch or sit down at lunch with these folks and, and they may not want to eat anything. Um, they might develop food rituals, they say. Eating foods in certain orders or excessive chewing, uh, rearranging food on the plate. That's how they, they, I guess, deal with the condition itself. Because it is as much a mental as it is a physical condition that they have to combat. So a lot of the things that you see in obsessive compulsive disorders with these patterns like this are things to look for um, in your friends to make sure that they're okay. Um, they cook food for others. They cook meals for others without eating themselves. Uh, they express a need to burn off calories, uh, that they've taken in like, oh, I just ate a, a cheeseburger. I gotta go, I gotta go work this off now. Um, ignoring the fact that, well, no, your body just took in fuel and nutrient and it kind of needs to process that. Um, they feel ineffective. So you may see um, depression or, or a feeling of loss, uh, of uselessness in folks. And this could be signs of, of larger eating disorders. Um, they may have a strong need for control. If you go to eat, sit down to eat with someone or go out to eat with them, they may want to pick the place or pick the food that's, that's being served so that they can control, have some control over their food. Um, from a, a mental, that was all the mental side of the psychological side of things. From a physical side, you may see they uh, have stomach cramps or other non-specific complaints about stomach pain. Uh, they may have difficulty concentrating. And this is something that is common in teens right now because uh, as we've seen in the past, teens notoriously have a lack of sleep. Um, but the lack of concentration may also be a lack of energy because they're not getting the proper nutrients that they're looking for. They may feel cold all the time. And you see your friends that, that seem to feel cold or they might have sleeping problems or they may get dizzy spells or something like that. Um, they may have dry skin. They may have brittle nails. You may see them using moisturizer a lot. So these are all signs of anorexia to look for. Um, the next disorder that they talk about here is bulimia nervosa. Bulimia is a serious, potentially life-threatening eating disorder categorized by a cycle of binging and compensatory behavior such as self-induced vomiting designed to undo or compensate for the effects of binge eating. So you may have people that enjoy eating, but feel guilty about what they've eaten. And then they force themselves to vomit, to get rid of what they've eaten, to compensate for it because they don't want to put on the weight. Um, you've never experienced any of these types of feelings or anything, have you? No, I've definitely, well, for myself or for others? Well, either, really. I definitely never felt as though I would want to make myself throw up. 
That's good. Um, which is definitely a good sign for me. Um, I've definitely not met and because and I've definitely not met anyone who does that. Okay. Well, that's good. But see, the thing is that these these types of disorders tend to develop through your teenage years. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked last week about the stages and the and the ages in which body image becomes more of an issue. Mm-hmm. So as body image becomes an issue, uh, teens tend to get into these eating disorders and it becomes a problem. And really the concern is more the health issue um, in conjunction with the psychological impact of it. Because if you're willing to do these types of things to your body, then there's there's an underlying cause that needs some attention. Mm-hmm. Um, so some of the signs of bulimia are general behaviors and attitudes that weight loss, dieting, and control of food are a primary concern. Anyone who obsesses over their weight or what they eat is a major concern. Um, Binge eating, any kind of evidence of that, including disappearance of large amounts of food in short periods of time, Uh, or lots of empty wrappers. You may see your friends have lots of empty wrappers. Um, Purging includes frequent trips to the bathroom. These are all things that you want to keep an eye out for. Um, And again, they may hide the signs of this with baggy clothes. Uh, They may look bloated from fluid retention at times. Uh, And they frequently diet. So these are all things that you kind of want to keep an eye on just to make sure that, that your friends are okay. And then there's a few other disorders that they go into here, but those are really the two big ones. Um, In addition to those, these other ones tend to be ancillary to those. So for instance, instance, uh, binge eating disorder. Well, obviously we talked about bulimia and binge eating is one of those. Yeah. Um, So there are things that I guess sort of um, lead to these other types of eating disorder issues. When we come back, I want to just sort of talk about um, diet and, and what your dietary habits are and what your eating habits are. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, you know, the average person tends to eat three meals a day. You have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You might have a snack or two in between there. Um, And unless you're uh, uh, an athlete or in training or maybe you have a crazy work schedule, most people tend to stick to that kind of eating schedule, and it's pretty safe. Um, Why don't you give us an idea of what your food schedule your your meal schedule tends to look like well i think i'm gonna go with the with whenever i go to school because that's most of the time so typically for breakfast um i would have uh mommy would make me three pancakes with a glass of milk and peanut butter on top and i have started actually just been able to eat only two and not eating the other one. Okay. I don't know if that's a problem. I've just started doing it, and I don't know why. It's probably not. It's just a phase. Yeah, and I wouldn't really finish the milk either. I would just have, like, two pancakes and, like, three quarters of the milk. Okay. And then typically for my lunch, I would have a pack of Lunchables, um, and that's and I would pretty much eat all of that. Okay. So that's normal. Um. When I get home from school, I would typically grab a small snack and a drink um, and eat that and do my homework. Then I and then for dinner, I would just either have what you guys were having or if I didn't like what you guys were having, I would just make myself a microwave pizza. And on occasions I would have dessert, but I've kind of not really had dessert for I've kind of stopped eating dessert. So so it's a fairly regular schedule that you have. And I think it's important to note that the snack that you have when you get home from school, 
you kind of have to do that because of how early you eat your lunch. Your lunch period's pretty early in the morning, isn't it? Yeah, it's like around 10 o'clock, and I eat my breakfast around 5. Yeah, so, you know, this year in school, your schedule's still kind of a little crazy because of how your, your lunch schedule actually is. Yeah, I'm actually the earliest lunch period. Right, and that tends to cause problems because by... Two, three o'clock in the afternoon, your energy levels start to run low. Yeah, the thing is, when I actually started this whole new diet, because before I'd normally eat a bowl of cereal, but I didn't. I started not liking cereal, so I moved to pancakes. And plus, I was eating like, I don't know, 20 minutes earlier than I normally did. And right. when it was the practice trial before the first day of school, I remember having stomach problems just having to adjust to my diet and the first day and i think after the second day of school i also had the same stomach problems right well and i think a lot of that comes to to from just you know a change of eating habits in general Mm -hmm. um between the times the type of food that you're eating the activities that you're doing in between there you know it your body gets used to it your body you know we're creatures of habit yeah and when you step outside that that regular pattern there, your body tends to object to that. Yeah. So, um, but do you feel after each meal that you're satisfied and you have had enough food? Yeah. Um, on occasions, I would sometimes eat a little too much. Like whenever we're out at a restaurant and we're allowed, and I get like a burger with French fries, I'll occasionally eat more fries than I normally could and I might have a small stomach ache afterwards but thing is I've noticed I really don't eat a lot like when like I can eat half the burger and half the fries drink my drink and be completely full and I don't really like the feeling of that well one of the things that you were combating for a while there was that you tended to drink a lot before if, if we went out to eat you would drink a lot before the, the meal got there yeah and then, and that's a good thing and that's a bad thing. And it's a good thing in that it helps to fill your stomach, but it's a bad thing in that you're not getting much nutrition from the liquid at that point. Yeah. Um, do you still find yourself doing that when you go to a restaurant? Um, I think it's, um, I think I main, it's mainly now whenever I have burgers, it's mainly because of the fries. I can't help myself. Like I always fill up with fries and I can never really eat. Well, I think it's a combination of the drink and the fries now. Okay. Um, I want to try to stop doing that, but it's hard to cuz I've gotten so used to doing it. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think that's an area I continue continue can continue to work on. But the thing is, whenever we have dinner normally, like I bear, like I have a small bottle. I have the small bottles of soda, and mm-hmm. I drink like half of it, and barely and eat my dinner. But like, and that's the interesting. At home, you don't drink a lot for a meal. Yeah, you know, a bottle of a small bottle of you know eight ounce bottle of soda can last you two, maybe two and a half meals. Yeah, um, it only seems to be when you're out that you tend to drink more. Yeah, I still don't get that. Yeah, that is interesting. Like, um, I'm pretty sure the um, little soda can is like, um, like you could have the cu- the cup of soda, and it would be like one and a half, I think, of the sodas, and I would drink like almost two of the, two one and a half of them. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, maybe it's just the environment that you're in when that happens. I really don't know. So when we come back, I want to kind of talk about what your, pun intended, tastes in food are. Okay. So we do go out probably more often than most people do. Yeah. Um, And when we go out, we try to go out to different restaurants as frequently as possible. We don't like to eat at the same ones all the time. Yeah. So... uh, Typically, what is your preferred menu? Give us some examples of some of the types of food that you enjoy to eat. Well, normally, whenever we would go out to any type of diner or restaurant, I would typically 
get a cheeseburger with fries and a side of mayo now because I like mayo. Because you're big in the mayo, yeah. Yep. And that would kind of be my typical meal. Like, that's normally what I get almost anywhere we go. Okay, so that would make for a lunch or dinner meal. Yeah. What would your alternative be if you couldn't get a burger or if you had already had a burger? Um, um, like, what'd you have today for um, dinner? Today I had chicken fingers only because we had Chinese and I just felt like getting them. Okay. So chicken fingers is an alternative that you would do. Yeah. Uh, if we go to Dave and Buster's, what would you normally do? Me and Mommy would share the caveman combo, which is basically I just have mini burgers with fries. Okay. So burgers again there. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, let's see. What if we go out to an Italian restaurant? Let's say Chianti's. I'd probably get spaghetti. So a pasta there. So we're not eating a cheeseburger there. That's good. Yeah. Pasta and cheeseburger. Okay. So I, it's a decent selection of food that you you eat, and you get a decent spread. How are you with vegetables? Tell us how much you love vegetables. Um, I'm not a big fan of them. No. Especially steamed ones. Like, I can eat fresh ones because I like them, because they're crunchy and sweet in some way. But whenever they're microwave, whether the microwaved ones or whenever Mommy boils them in a pot, then I really don't want them. You don't like a mushy? Nope. And with salad, it depends on the salad. I really don't like a, like, the salads we normally get have the crunchy parts in them. I really don't find a lot of them tasty. Plus, they have a lot of other ingredients that I probably wouldn't really want to eat. But I do eat salad at, um, whenever we go to Charlie Brown's, I just Because you have a salad bar. You can make it the way you want it. Yeah. And um, you don't have to eat kale at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I definitely think I'm better with fruits than I am with vegetables, though. And I think most people are just because they're sweeter. Yeah. Um. And I know. And like, I for some reason I've started just like we ha we have tomatoes, and I and I'm a fan of tomatoes, but I've started just taking one of the small bowls and filling it with our tomatoes and eating it for my snack because I like them and they're healthy. And they are. I, I don't particularly care for them because I don't yeah. like the texture, but they are very good, um, a very good food to eat from a, a nutrition standpoint. Oh, yeah. Uh, mommy also normally packs me a pack of grapes. Okay. Grapes are good, too. Although I really don't love them, I will eat them because sometimes they're good. I just don't like the really mushy ones. I think that's the same with, like, anything. I don't like mushy stuff. Like, I don't and like... And that's my problem, too, is I don't like the texture of tomatoes. Yeah. So that might be the same thing for you. I don't like mushy bananas. I don't like any mushy, mushy fruit or mushy vegetable. Right. Honestly, I just like the solid ones. So, so let's talk... So we've got lunch and dinner covered. So let's talk breakfast. What would your ideal breakfast food be besides pancakes? Because we've already talked about pancakes. You like eggs? Mm -mm. Do you like French toast? Occasions. Do you Occasions. like waffles? Yes, but I don't have them as much as I have pancakes. Right. Uh, how about bacon? I know you love bacon. Nope. Nope. I do not like bacon. Everyone here, I do not like bacon. Just know that. Uh, any breakfast meats? Pork roll, scrapple, uh, sausage, anything? I typically don't like eat meat. Okay. Okay, so the thing is, the main... Not for breakfast. Well, you eat meat for any other any other meal, though. Sure. You'll believe that. Well, you just sat here and told me that almost every meal you have is a cheeseburger. That's a meat, sweetheart. I hate to break it to you. Okay, cheese. I get it. Okay. Um. What won't you eat? What is absolutely off the table? Um, pork roll, bacon... Certain types of chicken, pretty much most pork. Okay. And some steak, except for burgers. Not just talking meat, but any foods. Um. There's one in particular I'm shooting for here. Oh, great. Uh, um. 
Did I have a hint? Came from your braces. Came from my brace. Oh, pudding. Yeah. I will not eat pudding or jello. How about yogurt? Or yogurt. Or yogurt. No, none of the mushy stuff that you had to eat. You were forced to eat while you're on a soft food diet. Trust me, those two months of having to eat those foods, I will literally throw them out if I see them. Like one time I was in my summer camp, we were served pudding for our snack, and I literally saw the people eat and I literally just wanted to throw up. Wow. <laughs> like So just to sort of bring us back on topic since the theme of this uh podcast is eating disorders. Based on your eating habits, and again, I am not an expert, but based on your eating habits, I don't think you've got any food disorders, any kind of obsessive compulsive habits regarding your food. Uh, I don't think you have an unhealthy eating lifestyle. Um, do you take vitamins though, vitamin supplements of any sort? Yeah, whenever I'm normally in pain or when I'm about to go to the orthodontist because that's always painful. That's vitamins? Um, yeah, I take the pain relievers. They're not vitamins. What, what vitamins do you mean? Like, remember you used to take your chewable vitamins? Oh, those. So you don't take any vitamin supplements? No. So you don't, so with the eating habits you have, you don't take any vitamin supplements and yet you're still fairly healthy. Okay. So I think you're okay. My point is that I think you're pretty much okay. Okay. Generally, when, when, when you have eating issues, one of the ways that people tend to cover that up is by taking vitamin supplements to get the nutrition that they don't get through their healthy eating habits. So my point is, is that you have health, you have relatively healthy eating habits and you don't need to be taking vitamin supplements and you're still getting good checkups with the doctor. Yeah, I can definitely say when I did have a small body image problem, I spoke a bit about this in the last video, um, I definitely thought that I was eating wrong because I was not, I wasn't really that thin and I just, and that was the time where I thought I wasn't eating healthy and I was afraid that I might have problems like you guys when I got older. And right. I just got scared. And, yeah, and I, and I don't think you're going down that path at this point. Yeah. So that was really all that I had to talk about today. This was really kind of just a supplement to last week. Um, did you... We'll come back. We'll get your final thoughts, closing remarks. I think we have a couple of uh, programming notes and... We'll see where we go. All righty. So go for closing remarks. All righty. So for those of you out there who are suffering from eating disorders, like my, like Daddy said in the beginning of the podcast, please go and try and seek um, some medical help. That, and I assure you, um, it'll definitely help you. Um, even though I. I'm not suffering from any real eating disorders. I definitely know that there are people who do. Um, and the best way to cope with it is to try and tell yourself and is to try and look at, well, at least find if you have suffered from any of these symptoms or just are having problems with being healthy anyway. And hopefully... Um, medical help will be able to help you in case if your um, eating disorder is too much. Okay. Any shout outs this week? Um, I'm going to give a shout out to someone who I know doesn't have an eating disorder, but has definitely gone a long way. Um, I'm giving a shout out to you, Daddy. Um, you used to eat a lot of junk food, and luckily you realized it at a good time. Well, sort of. Um, you've started to eat healthier snacks and are trying to stop snacking overall. And I definitely um, applaud you for that um, because you've definitely tried to take a big step. Even though you really don't have an eating disorder, you've definitely tried to stop eating unhealthy and I've started eating a little more healthy even though you really don't work out too much. Okay. Well, thank you, sweetie. That's very nice of you to say. No problem. So, uh, just a quick programming note. Um, we have one more podcast next week uh, before the holidays. 
Uh, we will be taking a break over the holidays. Uh, I think we're taking two weeks off yep. from podcasting. Uh, part of that will be traveling for some of it, so we're not taking the studio with us. Um, next week, we will be doing a Christmas-themed podcast. We will be talking about the origins of Santa, and we'll be asking biting questions like, is Santa real, and do you believe in Santa? Just saying, if, you, if you're like, I don't know, if you still are... Well, we well, don't want to give any spoilers yeah. away. We will have a you know disclaimer for parents to see in the beginning of that. Yeah. Uh, but it is uh, it'll be a fun podcast. Uh, we won't be ruining anybody's Christmas with it. That's not. Um, no, we'll be talking about the the facts surrounding it, some of the traditions, um, and we'll be ending it on uh, a little special presentation that all the hosts on the podcast network have put <laughs> together. Um, we did uh, a little recording and some video and kind of a little special uh, Christmas card from the podcast. <laughs> yep. Uh, anything else that we need to announce? Um, I guess where you can find all our podcasts. We'll go down our contact. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get our video podcasts on youtube.com slash insights into things. You can get our audio podcasts on podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can hit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or you can get us on our website where we have all of our videos, audio, transcriptions, and show notes at www.insightsintothings.com. And other than that, I think we're done. Yep. That's it. Another one in the books. We're out of here. Bye.